Folks still getting a lot of questions on hooking up three-point attachments, PTO attachments, stuff on the back side of your tractor. Let's go over this again. I'm gonna show you one more tip as well that you've never seen before. It might blow your mind. Let's get to it now. Now I'll show you a little hook, or a little slot I should say, on both of these three-point arms on the inside down here. Not every tractor is gonna be set up this way, but I think the good ones are. And that little slot is so that you can put a little linchpin in there and have a storage location so when you're going to hook up your three-point attachments, you know right where to leave them. They don't get lost in the weeds and the grass and the snow, whatever it is. A nice safe way to store them while you're switching out attachments. For those of you folks that have a mid PTO as well as a rear PTO on your tractor, this is a critical one for hooking up a PTO shaft. Take that lever that controls which PTO is gonna operate, rear or mid, and move it from the rear to the mid. What that's gonna do is free up that rear PTO to spin freely Rotate around so you can easily line up the splines and make that connection process that much easier. Sometimes there's extra holes in tractors for who knows what reason. Sometimes it's shipping purposes, sometimes you just don't know, but there is gonna be a hole typically in the shroud covering, protecting your PTO shaft, and that hole is there to install a safety chain, just a solid connection point so you can put that safety chain that's gonna be holding your PTO shroud in place so it doesn't spin around constantly. That's what it's there for, it's designed to do, take advantage of it. Loosen your turnbuckles or your telescoping links, whatever you have, if you're not using a quick hitch, all right? These turnbuckles on the smaller tractors, they just, they're just on a threaded rod, so just loosen those up. You're gonna have a lot more free space on those arms left and right to get around the pins that you need to to hook up. Now on the larger tractors, they have a nice telescoping draft link on there that freely slides over top of one another. You just pull a pin out, and that's gonna make life a lot easier too. Now that said, more and more folks don't even have to worry about that. They're getting themselves a Spico quick hitch. This thing fits right on the three-point hitch. You never have to take it off. You don't have to worry about the turnbuckles or the telescoping draft links or the little pin holders or anything else. You just put this thing on, make sure you have quick hitch compatible attachments, which 95-ish percent of attachments out there these days are quick hitch compatible. We have the measurements. You just wanna measure left to right and then bottom to top just to make sure your pin spacing matches up. The Spico is different from the iMatch and most of the others on the market because it does not require bushings. You don't have to upsize the pins on your attachments. It's just another expensive part that's unnecessary. The slots and the hooks on the Spico are sized perfectly to fit your category one pins. No extra parts required. You will see some fancy hydraulic top links on both of these tractors and we're gonna get to that in just a minute. But for the manual side links that we have here, they're gonna have grease zerks on them and some of yours are not going to and top links as well. If they have grease zerks, that's an added bonus, but keeping those things greased on a regular basis is gonna make threading them in and out, so adjusting your side link angles if you wanna tilt something one way or the other or extend or retract your top link, just a, a whole lot easier. If those seize up, they're a real pain in the butt. A lot of downtime in a field or at the barn just trying to get it back in operation. You just don't wanna mess with that. You need to grease your tractor all over the place. That's why Loop Shuttle is partnered with us. You save 5% with code GWT at Loop Shuttle, the best greasing system out there. Now, if you wanna make connection or even using your three-point attachments that much easier, get a hydraulic top link and maybe even a hydraulic side link if you have the extra hydraulics on your tractor. You can extend and retract these cylinders right from the operator seat as long as you have the hydraulics on there. I can hook up to attachments without even getting off the operator seat. And if I think about pulling these handles before I get on the operator seat, I can take an attachment right off too. It's a piece of cake nobody ever regretted getting a hydraulic top link, I'll tell you that right now. Now if extra hydraulics and a hydraulic top link are not in your budget, there is a cheaper option called the Easy Wheel. This is a big old wheel that clamps right onto your top link that allows you to adjust it, oftentimes right from the operator seat. So if you're using an attachment and you need to change the angle of it like a box blade, or if you're just on the back side of your tractor trying to hook up or disconnect from an attachment, it's a real easy and simple way to do so. And they are another Discount Club partner where you can save 5% with code GWT. If you struggle to hook up your PTO shaft, get yourself a PTO link. It's just like the quick hitch for the three point, except this is for the PTO. The PTO link is the original, all right? There are no tools required to install this system, unlike most of the others, maybe all the others on the market, all right? Number two, it's gonna push out that connection point, making it easier. It's more accessible, it's visible to the user, so instead of having to reach underneath there and blindly see what's going on, you have more access to do so. And also, if you are adding on a quick hitch, that's gonna push out the connection point on your attachment four and a half inches or so, just say five inches. That PTO link is gonna make up that difference, so it's gonna offset it and get that PTO shaft length right back to where it needed to be in the first place. And we made a habit of finding good partners like this, so you get to save another 5% with code GWT at tractorptolink.com.
We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. You can't push down on your arms or on your quick hitch, okay? There's no pushing down, all right? But what you can do, I'm gonna lower this down just for demonstration. So you can pull up on it, all right? So you wouldn't really do this with a quick hitch, but if you are using just your, your three-point arms themselves to try to hook up to an attachment, you can just pull up and you can raise up on it. So lower those arms down just a hair lower than they need to be if you just visually see that the arms are slightly lower than those pins and then you can just go up to it and just pull that up a little bit and slide it on. It's gonna be a lot easier to do because Otherwise, you're gonna have to get back on your tractor or do something else or at least come up here and push this down. So it's just a no-brainer, make life easier and always start on the lower end, okay? If you're not on perfectly level ground, you know, if, if you're if you kind of cockeyed like this, always lower it down to get that lower pin hooked up first and then you can turn your tractor on, raise it up a little bit until you kind of get evened out, all right? And then worry about tackling the other arm. To make adjustments, to your manual top links and manual side links. It is gonna be a lot easier to do it when the attachment is sitting on the ground. And again, it doesn't matter if it's on a quick hitch or if it's just direct connect to the three-point arms. You're trying to do it in the air and you have all of this weight of the attachment that's hanging on all of these uh, threaded connections on your arms. And you just can't spin anything around. There's just, there's just I mean, unless you're a He-Man, you can't do it. So what you wanna do, lower that attachment down to the ground and get all the weight off of the arms. All right, so I can literally do this with properly greased uh, arms here with one, fi well, not I guess not one finger, but just about one finger, all right? It is really easy to make those adjustments. You can do it on both sides if you need to, and you are gonna reach a point where either the, the quick hitch or the three-point arm binds up if you're extending it out or retracts fully and is making contact with an attachment, and then again has the full weight of it on there. And so. You can turn your tractor back on and raise or lower your three-point just a little bit to get that weight back off and make further adjustments if you need to. But it's gonna make life so much easier versus trying to use a big old wrench to do it. Just know that there's a leverage situation in play and let that work to your advantage instead of against you. Alrighty folks, so this is a tip that I don't think you've ever seen before. And a lot of attachments you're not gonna be able to use it with on a PTO shaft, but uh, the funny top flail mowers and the flail, most flail mowers in general, they don't have a shear bolt up here. They don't have a slip clutch. They're gonna be uh, a belt drive system. So that's their drive line protection. They also have um, hinged blades on here that give as well. So, but what you can do to make life easier is hook up this end to your tractor, all right? Do the tough end first. Watch, this end just has the same kind of connection as this end. You can take it right off. So you could take this whole drive line off, hook it up to your tractor first, and then be way back here where it's so much easier to have access to. Line it up on there. Oh, well, still doesn't always go perfect. There we go. Boom, and you're good to go. But you have way easier access out here than you do trying to get in between the three-point arms and everything else up here where it's limited access. So that's a pretty slick tip. Check your shaft to see if you have that option or not. A lot of you probably won't, but those that do, it could be a game changer. Normally not found on subcompact tractors, but even that 2038 hour we we're looking at and the Kubota M4 are gonna have three holes to mount the top link to on the back side of your tractor. And different manuals will tell you different things on what they're used for. I just pulled up a manual recently for a guy who had some questions on uh, what those holes were for for his tractor and sent him the link. And the lower hole was for really light loads, like something like using a landscape rake. The middle hole was going to be for kind of a medium load that's on there. You know, it could be a brush hog like this or, or a flail mower like this or a brush hog or a tiller. Um, and then if you have a really heavy draft load like a ripper or a plow, use that top hole. And looking at it now, I'm using the top hole for this flail mower. I don't think it's the end of the world, but there are those different positions there. Now, depending on what your manual says, I do recall one, I can't think of which one it was right now that actually said something along the lines of using the different holes and how it would affect an attachment when you raised it and lowered it. Like say you had a subsoiler that was perfectly up and down, for example, and as you raise that up out of the ground, 
if you're in maybe the top hole, it'll keep that perfectly up and down, perfectly vertical to the ground. But if you had it in one of the lower holes, it would start to change that angle of it there too. So read your manual. If you do have those three different holes that are on there, it's potentially gonna do different things or be designed to be used with a different hole based on the attachment that you have hooked up. All right, so just holding this as an example, but talking about that swivel ball end that's in the end of your arms, there are gonna be certain tractors out there that actually have something called a combination ball. So they're gonna be a Cat 1 and a Cat 2. And so the ball will be able to swivel. They'll be a little bit, tiny bit different design than this one here, but they'll be able to swivel and rotate around in there. And you'll have one hole that goes through there that's size for a Cat 1 and another hole that's size for a Cat 2. So if you are one of those lucky guys to have that set up on your tractor, I think it's pretty unique. I've never personally had one, but I can see that coming in really handy, especially if you're using both Cat 1 and Cat 2 size equipment. Bonus tip for you folks. Just thought of this one as I was out mowing. They actually have a little, well, not every tractor, but this one does here, this 2038, and a lot of tractors do have this little thing here. It's actually a stop, so you can position it in a certain location and keep coming back to that. So if you are tilling, for example, or brush hogging like I was just doing, you want to come back down to the same height. Maybe you have to raise it up to go from point A to point B or making a big turn and you want to raise it up and lift it up. You can come back down and you find that, that cut height that you like and return to it every time. So if you raise it back up again, move around, come back down, same exact spot, especially helpful with a tiller, I guess. You know, if, if you don't want to lower it down all the way and want to have a set depth that you're going to, you make a big your pass and you want to turn around you raise it up so you're not tilling the ground on your turn lower it back down you don't even have to think about it it's just right back there in the same position there you have it folks the most comprehensive list i've put together yet of three point and pto tips for you to make life easier now don't forget about those discount club partners they're just the tip of the iceberg click on the whole discount club page completely free for you but just all the vendors the partners the manufacturers that we work with where you can go to their website purchase something directly use our discount code gwt you get to save money, I get a commission, they get a sale, it's a win-win-win for everybody. Now if you're looking for something to hook up to your three-point hitch or your rear PTO, we'd love to help you out. We sell all sorts of tractor attachments, ship them all over the country every day of the week. Head on over to GoodWorksTractors.com. Prices include shipping, rewards, and financing too. And if you did enjoy today's video, we have over 600 other videos out there already. If you want to see tractor tools in action, I encourage you to check them out. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.